to read verses 20 to 28 in 1 Samuel 1. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. When the man of Hannah went up with all his family to offer the angel sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and, we will live, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you. Alcana, her husband, told her, Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may, only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bowl and ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I pray for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life, and he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the story of Samuel, but it is rather fascinating. Uh, how, the, how, this, how this boy came to be. And at the beginning of 1 Samuel, we read that Hannah was childless. Now we all know what that means, but verse 5 actually says the Lord had closed her womb. And, 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 that, and that creates a, a different kind of mental picture for us. It's, it's a, and it, it, it really just their way of saying that she had to got pregnant. Things were closed. You know what it means to be open versus closed. And for anyone whose desire is to be a mother, that'd be a very difficult thing to deal with. And, and the more time goes by, the more you wonder, is this ever going to be? Because the older you get, the, the more complicated it is. And if that wasn't bad enough, her husband, Elkanah, had, a, had another wife named Penina, who had children. And we're told in verse 6 that her rival, the Bible calls her, her rival, kept provoking her in order to irritate her. Now, how about that? It's difficult enough for a woman who must have a child who not a child yet yeah. to have a rival intentionally provoking you to irritate you. I'm irritating for her. This was a long time ago. And all these people were dead and gone. And I find myself irritated as I'm reading this. The one, you want us to take that kind of woman and, well, you know, use your imagination. <laughs> Just sit her down and say, stop it. All right, that's a joke. We, we don't want to stop her. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and so this went on here after year, after year, to the point where Hannah would weep and not be able to eat. And one day, Alcana, her husband, says to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? And now you want to smack Alcana. <laughs> right? Really? Did you, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you just ask her that question? And then follow it up with, why don't you eat? Yeah, that, that's what you want to ask a woman when she's mad. What's the matter? Why don't you eat? Yeah, why are you down the hall? Don't I need more to you than ten sons? I mean, come on, man, your wife must have a baby, and she can't. And her rival has plenty of them, is rubbing her nose in it, and all you can come up with is, what's the matter? Oh, let's see, not nice. So we want to smack this up on all, right? Because uh, that's just going to be guys who can learn from this. You know? <laughs> when it's obvious, don't act. Right? So, uh, of course, you need a lot to her, but Hannah really wants to be a mom. Who can blame her, really? And all her husband could do is wonder why. And finally, finally one day in the temple, Hannah stood up and wept and prayed to the Lord. And Eli the priest was there. And Hannah was bitter. You can imagine. This, is, this isn't like this went on for a couple of weeks. This is years worth of built up. I want a baby and can't have one. Everybody else seems to have one. And she says, O oh Lord Almighty, if you only look upon your servant's misery, and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. This is her prayer. If you do this, I will give him to you all the days of his life. And, and she kept this up. She kept this up. I mean, this is, this is, you, you gotta, I'm not sure if there's a secret to how to pray, but if you want something bad enough, you're not gonna stop praying about it. And if you do stop praying about it, how bad do you want it? She wanted this really, really, really bad. And eventually Eli saw her mouth move, but didn't hear because she, she was praying with her heart. 
And the Bible tells us that Eli actually thought she was drunk. And so he says to her, how long are you going to get a drunk? Get rid of your wine. And it's just like, so you see, if you ladies think that the guys don't understand, it's not really anything new. Here we are, you've got, you've got, you've got Eli going, how can I, can I, you can't figure out what's the matter, and Eli thinks he's drunk. And so, um, poor Anna, and her husband, but she assures Eli she's not drunk, but she's deeply troubled, she's praying fervently, pouring out her soul to the Lord. Now, i got to tell you, I, I've prayed hard, I've prayed fervently, but I'm not sure if I've ever pour out my soul to the Lord like, like Hannah's doing here. And Eli finally understands. He, he finally gets it. Thank God somebody finally got it. And he sends her away in peace. He says, go in peace. But what is it? He says, go in peace and may the Lord grant you your request. And with this, she was able to eat. And her countenance brightened. You ever, you ever know when you're feeling kind of, you had a long day, you're feeling kind of down, and it, it, it always feels better to eat something, doesn't it? Even if it's something small. And all of a sudden, you feel better. Early <coughs> this morning, after they worship. The Lord remembered Hannah's prayer, and she conceived and she gave birth to a child whom she called Samuel. And she named him Samuel because she said, I asked the Lord for him. And if you look at the name Samuel, it doesn't look that much different than the name Emmanuel. We see the L is the Hebrew word for God, and the Hebrew word for Hebrew word is Shema is the word used in Deuteronomy when they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, the word is Shema, and the word is Samuel. Which literally means heard by God. God heard Hannah's prayer, and Hannah literally named her son after them. That's how much that's how much it meant to her. You know, I'm not sure if you if you know what's in a name, I'm not gonna think it was sermon on names, but names are important. God heard her prayer. And if you remember later in 1 Samuel 3, when God calls Samuel, remember when God calls Samuel? He was still just a little bit. Samuel hears God talking. And he thinks it's Eli, because Samuel didn't know God yet. He thinks it's Eli the priest, and, and Eli does go back to sleep. And, and finally, finally, Eli the priest gets it and goes, hey, that's God talking to the boy. Just say, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel would go on to be a very significant person in the nation of Israel. Samuel, Samuel would anoint Saul king. Samuel would then anoint David king. Samuel was the one they went to when he became an old man. He was, uh, he was one of the wisest men in the history of the world. Why? Because his name means heard by God. He, God heard the prayer for him. He hears from God. That's just who he is. And in the passage I read, we see that Elkanah went with his family for the annual sacrifice. And this is important. This was important for the whole family to go. This was their pilgrimage. Every year they would do this. But Hannah says, I'm going to stay back. I'm going to wean the boy. And after he's weaned, I'm going to take him and present him before the Lord. And he's going to live there. Always. And did, did, did we hear that? I have to say that again. Hannah's going to wean the boy. They take him to the temple and give him to the Lord. And he's going to live in the temple. He's going to grow up in the temple. This is a woman who just spent years weeping. And in anguish that she didn't have a child. She was made fun of by her rival. Now, I, I can't believe there wasn't some hair going on there. <laughs> and she prayed. She made, a, she made a vow before God. And God finally gave her a child. And instead of keeping the child and having him be her pride and joy, she's going to lead him and give him back to God and have him raised in the temple. <sighs> now, God wishes her well. So Hannah takes what she needs, all the, all the fixings for the right sacrifice, and she takes Samuel and she goes to the temple, she brings the boy to Eli, and she tells him what happened. Remember me? I'm that lady you thought I was drunk, but I'm the I'm lady who stood here and prayed. God answered my prayer, and here's the answer to my prayer. Here's the boy. He belongs to the Lord for his whole life. Now this is obviously a special situation. I don't really expect any mother to do what Hannah did. And bring her son to church and say, Hey, here you go, Pastor. This kid belongs to you. Take care of him. Not really a position to handle that kind of a, an effort. So I'm not going to ask you to do what Hannah did. But what we can't expect from mother is to put your child in position to know who Jesus is. Because the child belongs to God. Don't they? Don't all the little children belong to God? And, 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 and we, we get them. We, we, we've got them. We, we've lost. We've got, we got two little babies here today. Real little babies. That's good stuff. 
and so you keep them. <laughs> this isn't my way of trying to do anything, it's just you keep them. And so the one's got the best birthday ever, right? When's his birthday? February 9th. That's mine. <laughs> Good stuff. But we need to put them in position to know Jesus. That's the job of a parent. You know, uh, that's the influence a mother can have. A hand brought her boy to the temple and brought him to the temple for good. And the mom and dad bring the child to church to be dedicated to baptize. They make vows to bring them up to the Lord. The church makes a vow to do all we can to make sure this child has every opportunity to hear the gospel and receive Jesus as Savior. Because you don't know if, if, if Brad or Kate's going to come to you and you're going to be their Sunday school teacher. And they're going to be like, tell me about Jesus. They, that's why they're here, right? That's why God gave you that child because God trusted you that you're going to take care of that child. You don't have to do what Hannah did. But you need to be that influence. It puts them in the right place at the right time to know Jesus. Samuel heard from God. Why? Because he was in a temple. That's that. That was the thing. Where were we? You can hear from God anywhere, but where are you? Where are you? You have a better chance of hearing from God if you know who he is. If the voice gets familiar, why does a child recognize his mom's voice? That's the most familiar voice there is. The first relationship any kid has is with its mom. You spend the first nine months inside. You know, it's kind of cramped after a while, and you've got to move to a bigger apartment. But the first relationship any kid has is with mom. And I'm not sure what kind of relationship you have with your mom. That's the one thing with mother's thing. You can't all be mothers. You will have a mother. Some of you still have yours, others unfortunately don't. Some of you are mothers, some of you are not. I'm not sure what kind of relationship you have, but I'll, but I'll bet they have powerful influence on you. It may not have all been, hopefully it was all positive, it may not have all been positive, but hopefully it was. But that really is the point, the point is your mom helped shape who you are. And those, those of you who are moms are shaping who your child is and will be. Hannah took that calling seriously, so seriously that um, she offered her child to the Lord. I mean, for, for keeps. For keeps. You're going you're gonna to find them eventually doing things and saying things that you do and say. That, that's true for guys, too. That's true for fathers, too. They're gonna, the kid's going to start acting like you, and you're thinking, why do you do that? Oh, okay, well, boy. And it's, at that point, it's too late. <laughs> Once they've learned that behavior from you, you're not going to change it, you know, because you're not going to be able to change yourself. And the most important thing you can think to teach your child is to worship Jesus, because they're watching. They're watching. And I, I, Hannah offered her son to God. She taught him to worship. I'm not just talking to moms here anymore, but it is mother's day. While we seek to honor our mothers on this day, we also seek to call upon our mothers to be the influence your child needs to grow up into who Jesus is. Is there any higher calling? Now you're going to teach them things like A, B, C, and 1, 2, 3, and, 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 and all the songs that we teach them. I love, I love having Sunday school in the sanctuary now, because we get to hear the little kids not seriously the B-I-B-L-E song. And I mean, they really bellow it forth. You know that? They, they really, they could really, they could really nail it. You sing that today, Kathy? So nice to be singing along with you. And so, uh, and, and, but that's, that's, it's called influence. It's called influence. You know, I can remember every Sunday school teacher I ever had from nursery clear on up to well, I am the Sunday school teacher now, but, and so uh, influence. That's the top of influence a mother can have. Because you, you look out around the world, what is happening in the world? Influence. People are being influenced. You have to influence the right way. Because there's a whole bunch of other stuff out there looking to influence in, 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 in every other way. So it's, it's, it's Mother's Day. So it's, it's Influence Day. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you, Lord, for um, those who are seeking to be mothers. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that we would all, we would all uh, teach our children to worship the way Hannah did by bringing our children, Lord, into your presence. Lord, this is a unique situation with Samuel. We know that. Lord, uh, we pray, Lord, that we would be just as fervent in our prayers and our, in our influence, Lord, over our children, whether they're our own children or somebody else's children, Lord, or, um, Lord, even the kids we get to bless those that are teachers and, and other things, we pray, Lord, you would be with us, Lord, as we seek to teach our kids what it means to love you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.